Today um, we are very lucky to have the the prof the prof the prof Rosan M Idros to be here today. <laughs> and before we leave him to do his stuff, uh, I will just would like to introduce him. I have some notes here. I'm trying to be paperless. I'm actually reading it from my iPad. Okay, here's my iPad here. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, there. You can see iPad there. Uh, let me see. I can't even see myself now. Wait, okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to read. I'm not using paper anymore. I'm trying to be paperless. Okay. Try my best. No, dear. Easy. Okay. Basic. <laughs> okay. Basically, Prof. Rosan Idros is a professor of open and distance learning and technology at the University of Science Malaysia on an, on the island of Penang in Malaysia. So, if you have people from beyond <laughs> Malaysia, from my website. Uh, USM is in Penang. Yeah. We will. We will you can, I'll share the link. Okay. But interestingly. Rosan is the first professor of open and distance learning appointed in a public institution of higher learning in Malaysia. Is that including private universities or also? Or are you no, the first no, in, open, public. Uh, in public institution. In public. Okay, yeah, okay. but I anyway, that's a great achievement. Pub, yeah. uh, <laughs> okay, the next is he has actually published more than 160 scholarly works in the forms of books, chapters in books, as well as refereed journal contributions. And he has also presented 25 keynote and plenary addresses in Malaysia, in Thailand, Oman, Turkey, Turkey, United Arab Emirates, and Mauritius. I, I always got problem with that uh, country pronunciation. Uh, Mauritius, or Mauritius, okay. Greece, Spain, and Bahrain, okay. And interestingly, he's the founding chief editor of the Malaysian Journal of Educational Technology and also is the chief editor of the International Journal of Excellence in e-learning based in Dubai and is a member of the editorial board of 10 international journals and also he has given the definition to a term uh, known as technology, technology and is passionately Good. promoting which is also this mm. talk is basically going to focus on that and uh, if you mm. ever want to write an article, do a thesis, a PhD <laughs> I mean, beyond e-learning, he is the right person to uh, to be your supervisor. I know he's very busy. I shouldn't be saying this, but he he's got more experience than any professor I know in Malaysia, especially e-learning and online learning, distance learning. So he is the man. Okay, but today he's going to talk about technology, and I'm going to disappear. I'll be in the chat box. Uh, I will appear when we come to the discussion session or when he needs help. I don't think he needs any help. Uh, and we're looking forward to his session. <laughs> and it's very exciting to, be, exciting to be here. And the title of his presentation, which I have not even introduced, is Using Technology for Engaging and Effective Learning. Oh. And I'm going to disappear right now. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. My brother Zaid, as you can see, actually, I started using the video conferencing just now. We had some problem with the voice. Now, I've moved to my own room. As you can see, the back, if you can see me, it is a books. Um, maybe I give you a quick tour of my room. This is uh, where you're looking at, where I'm sitting. Uh, maybe I've just turned clockwise. And you can see all the books and more books. Maybe there's a just a window outside. More books. I guess more books. <laughs> and, uh, well, I, this this by the way is the only writing space I have. Where you're looking at. <laughs> writing space I got left to write I have no other space to write on and that's a kind of a portable table that I can ship around <laughs> it's a typist table I kind of a uh, hijack a typist table uh, <laughs> hijack a typist. so my writing table also move I'm not the only one who move around the world my typing table also move <laughs> all over the place okay um, first of all thank you for dropping by I, I've got a, some presentation prepared for using technology I hope this can be beneficial to you but as academics I know you can move in and out and of your room uh, uh, so please do so there's no high and fast rule about it I'll just keep on talking but please if you feel the urge to ask any question uh, if Zaid is kind enough to give you the mic or you can always uh, put in some things in the chat box and I'll be glad to answer your question I want this to be beneficial to you. I didn't want to talk something that you, do, you don't want to hear and uh, let's, let's play it by you. I've got a 
kind of uh, 50 slides that I can kind of make it quick if I need to or kind of dwell a bit more if somebody asks any question. Okay, so let's make a start. Using technology, technology, you will find out what it means later on. But the main thing that we're trying to look at, which is um, our job, our task, our main core business is for engaging and effective learning so that what you teach will at least be transferred, facilitated to the students so that you can be as clever as us or cleverer than us or something like that. Okay. I need to move the slide. Takes time to move one slide. Press the slide. It's coming. Why are you taking so long? Okay. Okay. So the question is always we start with the question. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, focus of presentation is, uh, well, basically this. And and we will talk about technology at the end, towards, to, a bit towards the a bit, uh, but to, uh, towards the third about to the end. How do we make learning environment interesting and engaging, but at the same time promote deep learning? This is always a favorite question of mine because when I talk about, uh, when I talk to teachers, they all have this notion that when you use technology, it become more interesting and engaging. So I just ask them, if you have a very boring class session, who's the one responsible for making that classroom boring? Okay, so they reluctantly put their hand up. So if you say you can make and uh, the classroom very interesting using technology. Who's going to make it interesting? It's a teacher again. So I said, why do you actually make the classroom boring? <laughs> make it interesting, you know? Because the teachers, the one actually making anything happen with or without technology. Okay? But for our case, we are going to examine the interesting technology and how to effectively use it as a tool in teaching and learning based on some pedagogical principle. At the end, there's going to be a framework by you a um, ubiquitous framework for you to put things together because now we can actually put things together in a fantastic way that's gonna create a lot of headache for you but before we start as always because when we want to use technology my first question to everyone is what seems to be the problem what is it that we are trying to solve in the our teaching what is it that we to enhance what is it we're trying to highlight or whatever using technology if you cannot answer this question, then we have problem even at the first instance. That you have absolutely no idea why you actually want to use that technology. There must be a reason, but it's a tool. We have use the tool to make our teaching interesting, to accentuate what we want to do, to promote what we want to do, to make things that we cannot do before. And this is why we use technology. Otherwise, um, uh, we have a problem. And we, oh, what is this? Thing? Uh, next one. So we are. This is a brief overview. We are we are used to this. Uh, we have this is this is not new. Uh, I want to thank Mark Bullen for this uh, kind of caption. I'm using this this slide. Anything you see in here, I claim no copyright. I'm just sharing with you. So if anyone finds that this is my slide and please take it out, I'll do so later on. We have face to face classroom teaching. This is what we have been doing for the last one hundred years. Then suddenly we have classroom aids, whether overhead projector or video or TV, whatever case may be. So we use classroom aids, some VCR. Then we have, in, I think as far as I can remember, maybe in 1991 or 90, we have uh, the computer, the, the, the internet started to come into the, the, the institution and we have, you know, everybody's get excited and visiting all the naughty sites and <laughs> let alone learning. And we have kind of mixed mode, yeah, we can, we can start sending emails, blah, blah, blah. And to the point that we realize we can actually do this online, you know, we can actually do this online. But the problem starts when we start to put some uh, label on it. Yeah, suddenly we designate this to be e-learning. Ah, when you call when when, when the word e-learning crop up, everybody starts, starts to jump. Oh, e-learning! I have no idea what e-learning is all about. I mean, I've not been trained to be e-learning. And if you were to look at, it, this is the usual thing that you use to teach, whatever the case may be. It's just using technology. I mean, e-learning is a very confusing term now. I think people are trying to run away from E and just say it's technology enhanced learning, no matter what technology you use, that's fine. Then we also have um, the ability to reach people who cannot come to campus by the use of video conference. Uh, I promise, nice to meet you again. Let me drop by. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of a looking good stopping by. Uh, using by sending notes and audio tapes. So, then we also get a new terminology which is called distance education again this is something 
scary to most people. It's just the fact that you can now uh, reach people who cannot come to university by sending them notes, by sending them audio tapes, and by communication through video conferencing. Uh, so this is just another way of doing things, uh, addressing the needs of some people who cannot come to campus. So again, we're just kind of expanding the whole, the whole learning environment, not just to people who can come to university, but people who are in vocation, and uh, all those kind of uh, making the whole landscape more exciting. And with, the, with computers now, you have absolutely no idea who is behind the terminal. It can be a four-year-old, it can be a 65-year-old, it can be a face-to-face -face student, it can be a, 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 a distance learning student. But more importantly, more importantly, each major transition in communication media, from speech to print to video to electronic form, has resulted in changes, OK? In changes in the way we create information, record, store, distribute, access, transfer, retrieve. Now we have cloud computing. You can store your content in cloud, you know, because your, your pen drive might get virus and all. So this, you have to fill up yourself. How has technology affected your life in the way you create information, record, store, distribute? Are you still uh, using pieces of paper and post-it? Even post-it has gone electronic now, okay? So there should be a change. There should be a change in the way we do things. Just take your handphone. It has changed the way you live your life with the handphone. You know, uh, take away the hand. If you if you were to leave your house and you left your watch, if you can't be bothered to turn around to get your. If you leave your handphone, you will turn around to get your handphone. That's how pervasive the handphone has become in our life and how technology has uh, as uh, and when sometimes when I talk to some old people, they say, oh, "I can't understand this technology." They say, Look. You have been looking at live football for the last 20 years. Imagine you have been looking at a live transmission of the the uh, the Taraweeh prayer from the, the the Holy Mosque from for the last 20 years. That's technology. So uh, oh, you get you know, make them realize that technology is playing a role in their in their life. And now we are specifically looking at education. The problem is well, it's not a problem because now the university is no longer the main source of information. The teacher is no longer the main source of knowledge and information because of what because of all this all these thousands of softwares and um, the, 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 the the university has now become something pretty small here it's, you know so university can now become more of a peripheral i have sometimes preached that i said in the future all universities in the world will be open universities even now if you have a two unit course you only see your student two hours in the week for they're on their own and how do they study well bates in 1991 has already said this long long time ago 20 years ago he says he argues that students in conventional institutions are engaged for the greater part of the time meaningful learning is a myth which is true i mean most of the time we just stand in front of the class write notes on the board they just copy the bearings they move that's it you know, I, I don't think there's hardly any time for interaction. But if you, well, but he says that for most conventional and distance learning students, the largest part of the study is done alone, interacting with textbooks, friends, learning media, which is true until today. So we, we better get this scenario right because although it has been predicted many years ago, it is now becoming a reality with the availability of all these softwares and communication to look i'm in my room talking to the whole world if i can i mean if the, if the whole world is, is, is logging in which we couldn't do before this is this is fantastic i think i can start doing this from my home actually <laughs> i can be in my shorts or whatever <laughs> tea coffee drink and my dinner table you know this is fantastic but 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 there's always a but somewhere with the one t eh? not two t's eh? uh for the most part faculty members use technology electronics to simplify tasks yeah simplify the, i don't know put your hand on your heart and ask yourself have you fundamentally changed how you teach your subject fundamentally change how you teach or are you just readily translating your lecture notes into powerpoint presentation using multimedia content generators pdf files youtube blah 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 use course management tools to distribute course material upload past your question grades assignment this is this is what you normally do without technology this is what you normally you give them printed notes you give them oh, notes go ask them to make the print themselves and stick your course management and class list on your door whatever but now you're just using technology but there's no difference in what you do um 
know what? It's a fundamental change. Okay, now you only teach face to face. Now, how do you change the way you teach by using technology? By now, do you have uh, the? Are you familiar with lamps? Are you familiar with lamps? Huh? L A M S. If you were to look at lamps, I think this is this is good. This is excellent. This is a way that you can actually diversify the way you present information in so many icon tasks that's available in lamps using all the web 2.0 tools that's available this is fundamentally things fundamentally changing how you teach the subject because you can actually present three different teaching styles at the same time on one platform you can actually uh, take them out to go to some website teach come back do some activities it's, it's tremendous this this warrants a whole a whole two two to three days workshop on its own lamps this is my we're trying to change the way we teach change the way we teach In, include more learning theories more activities um, addressing learning style learning needs something that we have not done before in the classroom you're looking at 40 pairs of eyes but you're teaching the same way to everyone okay uh, okay this is a long story i can't answer this in this session uh, about fundamentally changing how you teach it can be another webinar if the if the captain agree maybe get another 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 expert on uh, how to fundamentally change the way we teach okay when we use technology this, this is the we, we use technology either we enhance traditional course where we inject new materials by uh, into our uh, without changing basic mode of instruction okay just enhance traditional course or we just use a cost management system to kind of uh, upload our PowerPoint, upload our uh, scan, our text. Or we import cost objects. Yeah, we can uh, hijack other people's content and use it. Or we develop our own new cost material. I'm not sure about who's, I'm not sure who's on the line. But for Malaysians, habit learning, oh my God. <laughs> If I want to go through the alphabet, I can start from A. Uh, and this is no, I'm not asking. There's a confusion with the e-learning, habit learning, blended learning. I think it's all the same thing. It's just uh, monkeying around with semantics. So if you talk about, you have A, asynchronous learning, B, blended learning, C, collaborative learning, D, uh, distributed learning, E, E, learning, F, flexible learning, G, I'm not sure what. You have hybrid learning, uh, U learning. I think it's just, a, to me, everything is a blend from the beginning of time to now with now you just change medium you just change technology you had old technology new technology big media little media that's all how you blend it uh, when you had little technology by using any way you can by uh, models by your own kind of creativity now when you have uh, technology you use in the animation simulation is to me it's a blend it's always it has always been a blend okay but if you want to make a name for yourself find some alphabet that you can introduce as a teaching <laughs> make a name for yourself and start promoting I think you can you will find so are you okay with this not so okay, you can enhance the additional program uh, import and um, make a new one making a new one with uh, a lot of time a lot of expertise which we don't have the time to do now these are some set points in the whole e-learning scenario this is uh, coming from uh, Robert Zimsky and Will Messi 2004 um, what happened to e-learning and why because we, we, I'm sure I have presented them in the time they all agree this concept of we build it they will come this is not so you know, we build it students don't come some will do, some will, some will. And, and there's no way you can equate coming to e-learning equals to learning. I mean, it doesn't mean if they don't come, they don't learn. So there's no way you can make the equation. So maybe it's not necessary for them to come. Uh, number two, the kids will take to e like ducks to water. Not quite. Some of them do, some of them don't. I mean, there's no way we can ascertain that either. E-learning will force a change in how we teach, not by a long shot. E-learning will become progressive only when faculty teach how they teach, not before. If, like I say, if you're an, an, a, a kind of a very creative teacher, you wanted to do this, you wanted to do that, and you couldn't do it because there was no tools available at that time. Now, when the tools came available, you're the first one to jump at it. So this is kind of facilitating for those kind of brilliant teachers who want to do more than what you could even even 10 years before. Yeah, it's not now we have uh, all the real tools. What do you do with it? You have no idea if you've not been uh, doing anything about it. 
uh, Nadia I'm from Saudi Arabia oh, okay Saudi Arabia Assalamualaikum nice to meet you okay now for all the thousands of tools that you can see on the net don't be scared don't be scared because we can categorize them into very basic tools that can help you it's just that there's so many in each um, category you have public learning sites you have instructional tools you have a social spaces tool Twitter application web tools like they're using web tools now blogging tools image tools video tools communication tools collaboration tools sharing tool my god you it depends on what you want to do you want to collaborate there are about 20 tools to choose from the free ones the paid ones it's up to you it's up to you okay but the whole idea is you must know why you're doing what you're doing what you're trying to do and then there are thousands of tools to help you do it okay uh, uh, because if we do not do a different strategy for the future large part of the global suburb will, will be this is not an old picture this is a new picture this is uh, the reality of life this is where people are still uh, we are still having this um, in many parts of the world and actually the, the world population now has officially been announced at 7 billion yeah 7 billion and for sure 5 billion yeah 5 f-i-v-e 5, -E, 5 billion will die without knowing anything about the internet no they need, no no do they need to have to want to because they're just struggling for life you know trying to get by just trying to get some education so we are the lucky two billion who have access to internet. We are the lucky two billion who have access to internet. Yeah. And this is just a small statistic about uh, for 2011 internet penetration, which shows that in Asia alone, out of the four billion people, only one billion have access to internet. Uh, the percentages don't look don't look uh, encouraging unless you are in Singapore, Brunei, or Malaysia, and something like that. The rest you're talking about one percent, point two percent, three percent, and whatnot. Um, yeah, coming back to use technology, I mean, sometimes it's, it's, it's mind-boggling that we really want to use technology, and if we, <laughs> this is a kind of a, I'm sure this is a joke or what, but if you were to look at the first picture here, this is a one, two, three, four, six pieces of um, blackboard, and I'm sure there's another one behind if you push this up, so you're going to have six walls to look at at the same time, yeah, you, and, but if you, if you were to kind of, go into technology suddenly the whole six pages have shrunk to something pretty small here uh, this girl is struggling to see what the hell is she talking about or something like that <laughs> i don't hear a oh, palm pardon my french mm, mm, mm. so i know this is food for thought i don't know I, 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 sometimes they say less is more and this is definitely more than this you know are you building internet and uh oh because you know if you were to look at 1700 public education the first time you introduced a black blah 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 and what has transformed this is way we have not fundamentally transformed changed the way we teach it's still the same this 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 should be at home they should not have to come to class if this is accessing if they can access this they can access it from anywhere it? like you are accessing me from anywhere in the world now you don't have to come to a room and hear me speak i'm going to show you something more interesting later on and we talk about old media new media in 1920 audiovisual we got radio and then we got uh, we got uh, the audio cassette and now we got the podcast but fundamentally it's the same thing fundamentally it's just a change in media uh then we got books in 1800 public education we have books and blackboard and chalkboard and then we have um, traditional books now we have ebook <laughs> it's still a freaking book <laughs> uh pardon the french again oh my god so many french words coming out this morning um then hmm this is what i want to look at this is what i want to look at this is 1990 where we started using the computers and this is a very recent picture of all the students sitting in the class guess where the teacher is the teacher is in front of the class looking at the same piece of equipment and she or he is punching something in the equipment and each student is looking at what the teacher is putting up in their own pc why I just why? Oh my god. The teacher is in front of them. There's a big blackboard in front of them and you have shrunk the whole big blackboard into something pretty small in here. And they are supposed to ask a question by typing this to the teacher. For heaven's sake, can you tell me why? When the teacher is in front of them, you can talk to them. 
Oh my god, I don't know, I don't know. I I I, I paint every time I see this picture. I I I, I wake up and I see it again. <laughs> Ah, this is this is nice. I like this. I like this. I like this. This is a picture that came out in this newspaper about two weeks ago. Uh, these kids, I don't know where. I, I didn't copy the, the caption. Um, you know, can anyone answer me this question? Can we have e? How can we transform the kids into e-learning scenario? It has a magic wand in your hand. Woof! Are you gonna have e-learning? Can anybody answer me? Just just type in. How would you transform this classroom into an e-learning class one shot? Haha, <laughs> uh, if you anyone who answered correctly, or Zaid will give you a present. Give them an iPad. I mean, not fair. You knew the answer. <laughs> you shouldn't be answering. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You take the piece of paper away, yank it out, give them an iPad. Wow, we have e-learning, and they're doing the same thing, monkeying around with the iPad. My boss will give me that. <laughs> No, 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 you know, you know, it's not about that at all. It's not about technology. I'm, I don't mean to be backward, but I benefit from technology, no doubt. But I mean, we really need to really look at what we do to make technology work for us. Okay, this is something that was um, uh, published on the web, talking about the online, one laptop per, per, per child, and results show that doesn't, uh, results show that laptop didn't make students spend more time, they to school or learning, and IDB concluded that uh, computers alone can't enhance the learning experience, they need to be carefully integrated them. Bottom line, you still need the teacher. It's a teacher who actually make it interesting. It's a teacher who use the tool to excite, to engage, to collaborate, to whatever. It's not the tool itself. I mean, the tool that sit there to the cows come home, nothing will happen. Okay, and this is something I want. Uh, and and uh, these are some some of the comments that came in with the picture. You know, they have a comments. And you see, it's like giving a piece of paper and pencil to child, saying that's how they learn to read and write. I mean, it's just a facilitator. But you need the people and the system behind it to make use of those two. Even though it's just a piece of paper and pen, you are the one who make it work. And this guy says it should be obvious to everyone, especially teacher. Blah blah blah. And the kids. Maybe the kids may be more computer literate, but it's not that any at all follow that math reading sign would be improved by access to a laptop. Okay, I say say no more. I mean, this is not my say. This is some of the comments that, and this is something that was published in February in two thousand eleven. Sir, I I I I can give you the URL of the website if you like later on. If you if somebody and maybe is interested, I should have put in the reference here. Okay, this is this is a statement by. Azim Premji, I'm, I'm sure you know who Azim Premji is. Uh, Azim Premji is a very rich billionaire philanthropist from India, the foundation, a well-founded non-profit. He says that when we took stock at a fundamental level, we realized that our whole effort in computer learning was at best a qualified failure. There was practically no impact in sustained in a sustained systematic manner on learning. This is not my words. This is his words. This is the, his foundation who spent billions of dollars uh, dishing out computers. Um, this is what they found. So this is not my words. Okay. And this is also something interesting that I want to uh, look at. This is uh, uh, again. I'm not sure I took this book. I found this very nice. This is the teacher saying, "With your mobile device, tweet in two in 140 characters or less." How was your summer vacation? Okay. I'm this student say I'm not seeing this guy say I have no Wi-Fi connection. This guy, this lady girl says, I'm my bed is dead, you know. What's wrong with this? Can anyone say what's wrong with this? What's fundamentally wrong with this? I cannot wait too long. I'm gonna give five seconds so if somebody don't kind of funny but true. Uh, no, well, this a this a big point here. Actually, it's a big point here. Um, anyone want to kind of put in a, a word in? What what's wrong with this? I'll tell you in five seconds. Ah, no, 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 no. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's like you found the article, huh? No shortcuts to a good education. Wow, no, you're very very fast, my friend. You're really the captain here. Ha ha ha. Now. There's no issue about using the phone, whatever. They don't even need to how to be taught to use the phone. They need to be taught how to write your summer vacation in 140 characters. 
is the competence to write that short paragraph. Technology is nothing to them. It's nothing. Did the teacher teach them? This is how you... It's just like you writing an abstract for your paper. It's not about using the Twitter or, uh, or, or, or online to send your paper. It's about writing that 250 word abstract. The ability to write the abstract. Now, this is... They need to be trained to write this summer vacation in 140 characters. And we have, they have not done. Sending it through the handphone is not an issue. Technology is not an issue. It's just a tool that you use to transmit. But the capability, the knowledge to write that short paragraph is the whole issue. Okay. Uh, okay. People might ask, how, somebody asked how to fundamentally change. Now, this is kind of a summary of the assistive role of technology. How technology can assist. Learning tasks can be made authentic. Now, if you were to put, let's say, your iPhone, you stick it on your head like a doctor, you know, and uh, walk around places and start recording things and you can uh, use a movie maker to make a new, whole new teaching content. Rather than a static book in black and white they've been using for the last 100 years, create your own content. Yeah, you take you give me learning tasks, authentic, uh, challenging, multiple, must <coughs> multidisciplinary. Yeah, assessment. They can be performance based, generative, seamless. Create question bank. Now let me ask you a question. How many of you has been teaching for so long? Yeah, teaching for so long, maybe five, ten years. Have you actually uh, have you actually jotted down every single question that the student have asked you? Okay, now if you had done that, if you had done that, you probably know where are the troubleshooting areas. And you had actually uh, prepared a feedback or an answer. Then you can have what we know as an FAQ that you can upload, the student can use, and it can be improved with time. It can become uh, something close to artificial intelligence. Yeah? You can structure the model, learning context, create collaborative learning, knowledge building, empathic learning, problem-based learning, action-based learning, whatever. Uh, grouping strategies, like we are doing now, grouping strategies. Uh, by using LAMS, you can create groups in the same class, group in classes between countries, between uh, accentuate your teacher role as facilitator, as a guide, as a co-learner by using wikis and all those things. So this is really changing the whole fundamental change uh, teaching scenario. And technology will assist you will assist you. They are there. There are too many technology now. My, my, my punchline is we have more technology than we know how to use. Okay? So, if, you, if you, the, the guy was asking who, how to fundamentally change, if you were to look at your content now, try to make it different by, by there's so many assistive role of technology that you can, that you, is, is here. And our role right now is to design a digital learning environment, design multiple perspective, personalize it. You know, we talk about personalized, uh, personalized learning environments, students centered learning and we're not seeing any of those yeah uh okay uh there's also something known as a buffet approach yeah this is a, this, uh, an analogy to a hotel if you were to go to a hotel you they, the hotel have no idea who's coming to dine but they have for you a buffet we have western food japanese food indian food italian food so Take your pick. You may like Japanese food, fine. But on that day, you saw something different. I've been having Japanese food all this while. I will try something else. So it's there for you. We have lectures, yeah, individual discovery labs, group work, videos, uh, uh, oral pr problem solving, problem based, project based, and you can actually design one content in many different ways. Maybe six, seven different ways: animation, simulation, quiz, uh, whatever. And the student can choose. You have visual learner. You can do a kind of pictorial, pictorial quiz, or whatever. And the student will choose. In fact, they have no idea what you're doing. You're gonna jumble them, everything. Up. You are the one who know you're putting this kind of, or this kind of learning style, that kind of learning style. You actually, and, and and another thing that I would like to see is you actually do some evaluation and actually look what works, what doesn't work, and that itself can be a paper that you can publish. And there are so many journals now that can, uh, they can accommodate those kind of, uh, they, they, they want to see all those kind of. And I would like to draw your attention to two major issues that's become a major stumbling block in the effectiveness and um, efficiency. What's the title? Huh? I can't remember the title. <laughs> of 
of of e learning ah, no, 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 of technology enhanced learning ah, ah, forgive, forgive the e learning because this is kind of cut and pasting there are two major issues two major issues number one we are missing a dominant design for learning object they need to emerge a dominant design we have no dominant learning design because you design the way you want to design it sometimes you have no idea who's in front of you you have no the, there's not it's not it's not based on any pedagogical theory ah uh, uh, you're engaging <laughs> thanks <right? laughs> engaging. hey it's a good captain this i should I, next time you come to connect i'll blunder you uh yeah and we need to really have a technological focus on what the student really want you see what they want and what we give them may be a mismatch so we're not giving them what they want yeah we're putting up slides and powerpoint and they probably want prezi they want more innovative powerpoint like uh uh yeah okay yeah yeah coming to teach you now see you then um you know as an extension to the interest in other technology so you must be as savvy as them so you must really know what they want and you can actually use them use them use the technology they know to put out your content work with them now there's no such thing as your your you you, you have we have been knocked down on our pedestal that's it get get to grips <laughs> I mean, it's hard to swallow but when technology is concerned use them they want this fine build it now together make them work make them learn they learn the subject and while actually helping you build the, the, the technological part of how this can be delivered it makes the whole classroom more interesting this this is where my focus will be a design uh uh a design uh, how am i for time right? am i am i okay i've been about three three five minutes now i'm uh, i'm not boring people uh so since i say a dominant design for object yeah okay then this is where i want to introduce something called technology okay this is coming from the word technology so kind of technology and you if you were to google you will find many definition of technology but i had a, i had a look at this um TPCK thingy that was published by Mishra in 2006. I actually looked at this for almost a year, trying to figure out, figure out the three points. Sell it. Uh, well, what TPCK technology pedagogical content knowledge? You can Google it. You'll find it. Uh, Kono Mishra 2006-2005. Technology, technology, pedagogy, content knowledge. Okay, so it's technology, pedagogy, content. So the whole thing is uh, kind of joined up the pedagogical, pedagogical content knowledge, uh, content uh, technological content knowledge, and uh, the technological pedagogical knowledge. Uh, so in, inside is a mixture of all three: technological, pedagogical, content knowledge (TPCK). Okay, but this is just a two-dimensional Venn diagram which shows a relationship. That's all. It just says that, and in Right, so it just says that there is a logical relationship between the three components of technology, pedagogy, and content. Okay, so it, they go on to say that through technological integration is understanding and negotiating the relationship between these three components of knowledge. I had a problem trying to make this work in my mind. How do I actually operationalize this? Yeah, but I look at it for almost a year trying to figure out some kind of a how they can kind of relate to each other by like a, like like a, like a wheel, wheels and uh, some kind of linking mechanism until one day i got bored in our board meeting and i looked at this and say i can do something with it you know i think i have to go back to my physics roots um if you were to look at this and you can actually draw an axis okay and another axis and another axis so what you can have now is something that you can actually say that you can teach certain content this is learner based content this is this is subsumed the learner is inside here i'll, I'll show you why the learner is, is inside so this content is for you know the content now you have a, it is the, now you know you know who you're going to teach then you decide how are you going to teach these people 
and what technology you can use. So you're going to have one point that converges technology, pedagogy, and content. This is called one learning object. And you can change this content with a different pedagogy and different technology. And you can, so you can shift or you can have, uh, 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 you can have this content here using the same pedagogy, using the same technology, or this content using the same pedagogy, and you're going to get a straight line of just your teaching. But if you keep varying the technology and the pedagogy, we can sometimes change it from face to face to a collaborative learning, experiential learning, problem-based learning, or field trip, group work, you name it. You mean there's so many uh, hundred, uh, hundreds of pedagogy that you can actually, you can try something on your own, create a new one, who cares? Okay, um, and I got some feedback saying that this is confusing. You say learner-based content because the learner is hidden inside here. I kind of thought the learner would be central here at the axis, so we branch out for the content that they need, how to teach them, the technology to use them. So it, because of that, I actually took the learner out into a separate axis. So you have the technology, your pedagogy, and your content, but it can slide. It can slide on this learning style axis. So you can address this is a visual learner, kinesthetic learner, visually impact learner, dependent learner, independent learner, whatever. And for that type of learner, you can actually design the content, uh, how to teach the content, and the technology to assist you to teach the content. So this is the framework because this framework will force you, will force you, will force you to consider the subject, the learning preference, the pedagogy, and the technology. There's no, now, if you were to look at your content right now, just do a quick audit of your content. And there's no need to reinvent the wheel. There's no need to check out all your content. Just, just fill up this box with your content. Subject is no problem. Okay? Pedagogy, maybe. I don't know if you can identify what pedagogy or face-to-face, -face, fine. Then, learning preferences. How, what student are you addressing to teach this content? And what technology is i think you're gonna have a bit of a problem filling this learning preference or learning style box because you have no idea you have not actually found out the learning styles of your classroom this the whole idea is this the whole idea is such that such that i mean this is hypothetical we can we can talk about it. The, the, the computer people who want to be interested in it, look at fuzz, you can look at fuzzy logic you can look at anything you can actually say a learner can come in uh, a session and uh, they can are uh, taken through an uh, interactive learning style assessment blah blah, blah they, only about 10 questions 15 questions then out of that they can be identified what kind of uh, learning style they have and they will be kind of uh, maneuvered to the learning style that you have prepared for them yeah learning object based on learning style there's nothing to stop them from going anywhere else like that i mean this, we're not gonna be hard and fast but, but this is for your own your own consumption oh, okay you know how many people but so if you actually were to do a, a classroom check you're going to get about two big dominant groups. You're not going to get about 20 years. No, no. You don't. If you try, you're going to get about two big ones, maybe one small group of people. You know, you, I've seen so many publications when they do that, they find about three groups with two big ones and one small one. So it's up to you to try and find out. And you can Google or internet and find so many interactive learning style assessments, some free ones, some paid ones, but you can do any one of your own but at least do do something about it uh i think then what we're going to do okay uh my phone uh okay so um technically speaking the students do not know what 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 what's here you can still kind of interject a little bit of here you can say um 80 percent of style one and maybe 10 percent of style two and 10 percent of style three okay they have no idea this is we're talking about a dominant style so at least we keep them happy for a while then we inject a little bit of style two and style three yeah for here you may want to put maybe 80 percent of style two and 10 percent of style one or 10 percent or whatever 70 15 15 and you know you want to actually ease them into the different learning styles so this is you are the one who happened uh, i thought somebody was at the door sorry um so, so you are the one who is actually maneuvering them 
and 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 looking at them how when when you do that you will know uh, how much they understand how as to actually uh, address the learning needs and 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 again again this is what I'm, uh, you eat those things can be published definitely can be published I assure you this is what people are looking at trying to find out how to actually address this issue this is an ongoing issue it will be here five years from now <laughs> don't worry about it uh, because and then um, uh, okay 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 so what I have done is actually um, came up with a framework this is new this this I have not published yet this is I have not published I think I told that I'm gonna do something about it I just didn't have time to do this gives us an opportunity to put together not just technology but also um, learning events if anyone can recognize this are uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine what is this anyone anyone will type in something what is this the keyword here is nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. What is that? What is that? Anybody? You know? Give me one keyword. Guy's name. Guy's name anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say, you cannot answer. You're not supposed to answer, Say. I know, I know. Daniel, Daniel. Okay. So now, now, no, it's actually Daniel's nine events of instruction. So if you were to uh, re-look at your, re-look at your notes, re-look at your content, look at this from this point. Yeah, yeah. Motivate the learner. When you come to class, how do you motivate them? Or you just quietly walk to the board, pick up a chart and start writing? Or just kind of put out your PowerPoint and they start copying? Motivate them. Inform them of the objective. Direct attention. Stimulate recall. Provide guidance. Enhance retention. Get some performance done. Assess performance. Feedback. Promote learning. Like, like you're watching a movie. Yeah? Like, like you're watching a drama on television. The first thing they show you what happened last week. Uh, maybe a short clip or whatever last week. Then you show you the drama. And then before the end of the drama, they show you what's going to happen next week. So it kind of thing motivate them. It's very simple. This is the magic. You identify the learner. Okay? The content. And, and I'm not asking you to do everything of the content. Just try to find one trouble area. Start with one trouble area. Yeah? The area. Because naturally... You, I'm sure you know in class, students might be asking the same problem year after year. They say, these students cannot understand this, but what are you doing about it? What? <laughs> if they're asking the same problem every year, and you're complaining every year, why have you not solved the problem so that it doesn't become a problem anymore? Okay? Okay, just identify one, one problem, and go through the motion of the type of educational activity that you can do to motivate the learner, da, 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 da. then you look at the pedagogy, and if you really need to put some study guide how to actually ask the student to 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 do this uh, technology then for here i put for em learning whether you if like, the example is this if you want to say uh, use website you have uh, some web page website that you have identified now you can actually put here the actual url it becomes a a, a uh, what's the word? Eh? It's like a blueprint for this problem. Uh, you know. And you can, if you want to say use mobile learning, you want to send some messages through the handphone. Let's like say you want to send three messages in a week. Now you really write down the three messages that you are going to send in the week based on this trouble area. Okay, so if you have found a YouTube channel or something, some documentary uh, that you identify, uh, you put them. Uh, enhance retention in here maybe some video that you want to look at uh, make sure you design some kind of activity for them when they go to see the video yeah some content here go to the video do this do that do that so that to 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 uh, to, to enhance retention so you can use this framework to actually solidly build a block of lesson design that takes into account the learner, the content, the pedagogy, the technology, and built in type of activities uh, or whether e learning, m learning, or, and based on very solid events of instruction. If you can do this, you can do this. You, see, you know, I, I, mm, I was on a plane last night, so I actually uh, uh, kind of uh, saw the. Uh, um, uh, 
yeah, Sky Show. <laughs> so if you were to open the, uh, I don't have a lightsaber. I'm not good bong. I'm not gonna jump or put on a. <laughs> Just a movie channel which gives you the title of the channel. If you how long the channel is, it gives you this, the 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 uh, uh, rating uh, whether it's G or PG thirteen, and it tells you what kind of a movie this is. Whether it's a comedy, drama, romance. I think we're trying to do the same thing here because at the end of the day, we can actually create a catalog based on learner content pedagogy technology. So students can search based on content. Zoom goes to the content, and from that content, you can use how the content has been taught, and um, what technology is being used through pedagogy. You can search through technology. You can search. It's just like a directory. So this does not exist yet in the whole wide world. I have not seen one before. Have you seen one before? Let me know. Uh, then I'm going to share with a little bit with you, a little bit with you, how actually this can be applied. Now this is this is for, this is for what I did in learning now distance. Now the, the subject is physics. The students are distance learners. So I'm not going to be too picky about what kind of learner they are. Adult learner have a very similar characteristic. So this is what I've done. This is for my physics course. I actually uh, send them SMS messages. Okay. One of the main tasks of this project is to incorporate pacing by constructing the text message according to the sequence of topics in the learning content and so I send them five messages Monday to Friday, Saturday, Sunday is off and uh, this is uh, what the messages look like, it's a block, block by block, week by week by week, this is uh, on the uh, optics course, you can see I give, this is the same, this is the same thing that you see in, in this slide, okay, let's look at this, this is the second week and these are all typed on my handphone, including all this so this message say lens make a formula one over f equals to n minus one over uh, bracket one over r one minus one over r two plus bracket c page sixty seven equation four d. This is got this one in the book. See for the distance learner in the whole week they may not have the chance to open the book. This is the content kind of for the whole week of reading. This is the gist of it. The definition of front of a diffraction, front of a diffraction, a little bit about the properties of the wave, and, and so and if they were to open the book. This is the same content that they will see for the whole week. <clears throat> this is just the kind of uh, summarize. So the whole the deal is this: when they get the message, they're supposed to read the message and write the message somewhere. I say I don't care where you write it on the wall, on the ground, on a piece of paper, on your pants, on your shirt, because I want from them in 24 hours just two minutes of investment, just to read it and to write it somewhere. Okay, so I assure you, and this has been assured in the paper that we already published, and uh, they found it very useful because when you open the text, this is not alien anymore. I saw this message somewhere, somewhere is a bit of the brain, this helps knowledge retention. Okay, so you can do this because now what happens is this we have the textbook, yeah, we have the textbook, then suddenly we have text ahead, then we have a website, but all here, the knowledge is still stuck somewhere. Yeah, it's stuck in the textbook, it's stuck in the textbook and CD, and it's even stuck in the website. Because as long as you don't go to the website, and if you are somewhere out in the field or you have no network, then the, but an SMS is something that comes directly to your mobile phone. So you have actually taken the, info, the knowledge out, send it to the student in chunks of information, which is suitable for the distance learning student and this can be used for look if you have a quiz in academy fantasia you can use the same thing by sending your student one or two quizzes a week so the whole idea is the learning takes place all the time okay we won a prize because of that uh, i published it in relation journal in time we actually won the asia PSD panel mobile learning initiative plan in 2009 uh, so uh, you can see from our website i won about two, one or two so what can be used? This is what this is fundamentally changing. This is again fundamentally changing the way you teach. Now you can send small packages of information. This is the 140 to 165 content. You can send them daily or weekly study tips, reminders, alerts, multiple choice quizzes with immediate feedback. You can send them the URL to browse and search for short text. You can ask them to follow a link on a website. You can send them glossary, concept definition, 
anytime. The worst case scenario, if you want to cancel the class, you would normally have to either go to class, put a notice board on the wall, and they were on the door, and they will wake up at 8 in the morning, come to class only to find that the class has been cancelled. So if you send them a message, uh, 7 o'clock in the morning, class cancelled, so when they wake up at 7.55, look at the hand, put the phone down, and go back to sleep. They don't have to waste their time getting up, coming to class, going to find out uh, that the class has been cancelled, and swearing all the way back to the classroom, <laughs> to their dorm, or wherever they want to go. So this is now a new generation of lecturers where you need to think in small packages. You need to have the ability to write small content, teaching content within 140, such as this. This is, I mean, it, it takes a lot of things. You give them the definition of thin lens, thick lens, and power of lens, formula, principle. And this helps them a lot because all they need is to get one message a day and they're done for the day in terms of learning something. Okay, uh, which is better than doing nothing at all because the books are at home. You know, they can't carry all the books in the car and they got work to do. And this is in the field. Read the message, write somewhere. Two minutes done. Voila. You know. Okay. 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 What else? So the whole idea is this. The whole idea is this. If this this is the whole, this is kind of web, the whole curriculum. I stretch this website. Okay. Voila. Okay. Then you can interject through SMS messages, you know, the daily tip or something, knowledge retention assessment, uh, schedule, hey, stop copying each other, I know you're plagiarizing, blah, 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 some, some instruction design, some whatever, higher order teaching skill, you know, all along the way, so the learning is basically continuous, not only happens when you come to class twice a week, and that's it. Let's say the minister, the prime minister, is going to give a budget next week. Uh, on 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 Friday. Ah, I forget it. Okay. Uh, I'll just plug it up. Let's say the minister is giving you a budget on Wednesday. You have a class on Tuesday. Uh, or you have a, you don't see them again until until. Haha, <laughs> not my PC. I'm, uh, it's out of the country. What? He's still alive. No, it's good. <laughs> voilà. uh, there's no way for you to let everybody know, but you can send an SMS message to everyone. Listen to the budget tomorrow and on Friday. We'll discuss about I want a short summary email to me. This is fantastic. You, know, you don't have to wait to come to class to get things done. So this is looking at it. You must, otherwise, nothing will change. We're going to have to come to class or boring class. So connected to the world, uh, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, so I'm almost towards the end, I think. So there are, there are implications to teachers, implications to teachers. Yeah, we, you know, we talk about, we talk about the framework. It's not the technology framework. We talk about the uh, design framework. Now you must change. <laughs> Okay, okay, and done. Whatever, whatever. And yeah, now even in, in, in universities or where the wireless. In fact, you know, I have my handphone, my DG network is off all the time. I'm just using <laughs> whatever is around me. It's good enough. I don't have to pay anything extra. Dinos don't want to change. Whoa, I, that's, that, that's, that's, that's tough too. Well, maybe some that some um, well, I mean, at least people <laughs> some people is to talk even to take a I, it's more like kicking a butt actually. Hmm. I'll stop the salary. Okay. Next to oh, the company's wonderful learning facilitation. Otherwise, nothing will change. We must change. We must see. We must start using it. Reorient by adding more. There's so much resources. You got OCR, OCW. Uh, open repository. There are other lecturers around the world who are very willing to share share the content. So use it and please, please share our content as well. Please don't be downloaders all the time. It's it's, it's heartbreaking to see that we're not we're not willing to share when we are willing to actually just just take other people's uh, hard work and use it. 
We must be from a lecturer to a consultant to a mentor resource provider towards learning facilitation. The lecturer must now become expert questioner. You yeah, provide them with a framework and question and question. Let them think. Let them think. Let them think so they have no time to ask us question. <laughs> you know? Uh, then you now become a designer of learning experiences in the students. Yeah, you know must provide initial structure. You must provide multiple perspectives on topics and emphasizing on salient points. Blah blah blah. Uh, not just just regurgitate already the available content, which they can read themselves. They can read ahead of you. Yeah, let them do some work. We talk, we talk about student-centered learning. We never give them a uh, solid so start mixing around and learn from each other okay we must not emphasize more on learning references and now we must also share the post digital literacy with our students they can become they can help us but they have so much knowledge technology and and, and, they, and they're going to be so happy to share with you and this can be a big motivational learning for them you know because i the, i used to do this in my distant learning so very basic thing like I break them up into two groups. I say, this group, you prepare five, five multiple choice questions on the topic to ask this group, and this group prepare five multiple questions to ask this group. Tomorrow, you, you will challenge each other. Unknowing to them, they have to pre pre present, also prepare the answer. And it will stick in their head until the day they die at least five questions. And they will ask each other. And they learn from each other. And when they move away, when they finish the class, I will have 10 free multiple choice questions. <laughs> I can use in the next class. You see, they do the work. <laughs> they do. I don't know about you, you know. Now, there are so many ways that you can actually benefit. So, at the end of the day, like I said just now, we must um, design the, the digital learning environment. There are two tools. All over. You go to if if you go to become reality and fall on your head, I think you'll die. You know, it's like a whole book right falling on your head. So many tools. You must take the time to learn some tools. And design multiple perspective, rich pedagogy. Um, uh, it's a bit of a typo error. Rich pedagogy. Yeah, I know you are very creative. This is time to unleash your creativity in the lesson design. You know, I used to do pendulum experiment with my 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 my. I give some talks in the primary. If, if I talk to some teachers. Uh, if they want to uh, design, ask them to design a pendulum experiment. Oh, they say, oh, we need, we need a pendulum, we need a, we need a retort stand. Uh, so how much will it cost? You, whoa! I for a class of uh, fifty people in the in the rural area, you want to bring them each uh, equipment. Or oh, one set will cost maybe about hundred ringgit times fifty five thousand ringgit, five hundred ringgit. Yeah, say look, ask them to do a pendulum to the village, take a string, take a coconut, take a boiled egg, take an apple, take a lemon, hang it somewhere and just swing. You know, the more important thing is how to actually take the time, calculate the T, calculate the G. This is the competence that we want, not the equipment. And I said the best part of you will never get until the day they die is <laughs> you can eat your apple, you can eat your boiled egg, you can drink your coconut water. You know, it's it's it's, it's sisters to reason. You know, just just I don't know, I don't know about you, but you know. Personalize it. Look at learner preferences. Student-centered learning. You know, become a planner, questionnaire based on this. Let them do some work. Uh, innovation in teaching learning. And assess and evaluate. This is not done. Assess and evaluate. What's wrong? What works? What doesn't work? What do they want? Talk to them. Write a paper. Publish your finding. And keep on improving. This is... And, and move to another tool. Another another pedagogy and or um, maybe in the same class you, you can do three pedagogies at the same time I, it's your class do what you like google logic <laughs> well i mean it's finding information but you still must know what you want to do with it you know you're you're still the guy you're still the expert you're still the one who's trying to maneuver the whole lesson design uh we need the teachers because people say technology will technology will never replace the teacher 
but the teacher who know how to use technology effectively will replace those who do not. So teacher replace teacher. Don't worry about technology. Technology cannot do anything. It's just a tool for you. Okay? But the person, the carpenter who is very competent with the tool will replace the carpenter who do not know how to use the tool. I mean, this is this, 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 uh, I think that's all I got for now. That's all I got, actually. Uh, I've, okay, just to recap, I kind of shown you uh, all those uh, technology, some findings on the world, that how it's not being success story, and that we really need a dominant framework. We need to really com conform with the technological needs of the students, and we look at technology giving you a framework and um, forcing you to put together the four elements of technology, pedagogy, content, and uh, the learner. Um, I gave you a ubiquitous learning framework where you can incorporate the learning instruction plus technology into something comprehensive that can be reused, that can be added on with new resources, it can be changed, you know, so you create a whole new uh, exciting learning environment for your students. Huh? At the end of the day, you must do it. The teacher must do it. There's no robot to help you. There's no technology to help you. You are the one who is doing wonders with technology. Okay. It's been about an hour, actually. Huh? Huh? Uh, if I can get some... Is that calling the captain? Anything I can do to um, answer some questions? Um, uh, if people have to go away, no problem. But I'll be here and feel the captain chase me away. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Uh, even if people want to ask questions uh, uh -huh. with a mic, I can give them the mic. Eh? Just say you can still email. No, 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 no. In the chat box. Uh, or you could. Uh, you you can still email have me. You I have no problem with that. Given your email, let's give your email. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no problem. You're, you're replying yeah, time is sure within one month or one day or one week or? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I'll try to. Uh, I'll try if I can. Yeah, we need good deep like teaching sessions to. Uh, uh, there are so many good teachers there actually. They are not sharing. They are not sharing. We have good teaching practices that for some unknown set reason, if we had kind of publish it on the web, have our portfolio or something, just share it. People can, uh, you know, this journal called the Physics Teacher, they, they, it's only about that the Physics Teacher share, taught this subject, how they this subject, and, and, and people can actually try it. This is this is what we should do. Just, just, and there's no wrong or right answer here. Whatever you do, if it works, it may work for you, it may not work for other people. But as far as other people's uh, trial can work for you, can. But if you are willing to try, and um, as an uh, a whole academic side, I think you reach a place and you can and consider right answer. Sharing and talking about still using uh, radio and uh, you know that 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 poor student still poor until virtual reality. So this whole whole array, whole spectrum of learning and teaching resources uh, that can other. So share it, share it, no problem. Yeah, I'm not willing to share. Mm. You know, you look at you look. I don't know. Maybe we should in, we should we should interview this MIT guys. They did seventy five percent of those MIT lecturers do it for free, and they have another group to actually authenticate the content before it goes on the net, so that there's no plagiarism issue. Choose or not, and why do they do it for free? What drives them? I don't know. Maybe hey, we can I, I invite. Think they get right, maybe we can invite what content providers. How? What? Yeah, I can try. Just give me the. Okay. Well, I mean, I'll, 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 I'm not invited directly for the new. S, uh, but I don't know if you uh, uh, agree yeah, yeah, yeah. with the. Am I? Am I? Am I? Yeah, 
why not? not? We just want to know I'm, why. I'm, what I makes them tick, you know, I kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> no, I just want hmm. to say one thing. Uh, first no, of all, actually, the notes that they prepared, they actually didn't prepare for online learning. They just prepared it for the classroom. So they reused those materials for the MIT Open Courseware. And secondly, if I'm not mistaken, they do they did get a financial compensation. Uh, I, I you know so uh -huh. it's not it didn't come they actually didn't do it for free if if you want. To. <laughs> they did get compensation okay, okay. for doing it. No 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 no. Uh, Courseware okay, MIT. Okay. Uh, okay. Now it could happen many ways. No. But it's, we okay, should do it for free. I'm not saying we should do it for free. <laughs> no 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 no. Uh, and, uh, there are there are there are spin-offs. There are spin-offs here. Like if you actually do this, you can actually publish it. What you publish in it that works towards your uh, promotion. Okay, and there are many ways of doing it actually. Um, they may have a culture of uh, they don't really care about KP about impact factor journals, but they concentrate on teaching. Fine. We are about the impact. So we're publishing. No, that can work towards our own. Uh, so there are many routes to get to the whole issue. You know, yeah. I, I mean, if, to me, that's a real. You know. But uh, I, I just want to make it, uh, make find on. somewhere. Just yeah. say, yeah, uh, the regarding what? the sharing of resources. Actually, m what most lectures do. I mean, what I've seen now, because I've been with academics for the last 10, 11 years. 99% of the content mm -hmm. I've seen is actually not even their own content. It's actually just reshuffling of existing content. So <laughs> what is so the problem this, sharing? This it's not that they're actually this sharing is, so much of the knowledge. They yeah. may be just sharing their time doing it. Yeah, this slide is not even mine. So that's why right. I don't understand <laughs> what the problem I'm actually sharing. <laughs> okay, it's like I got an ice cream. And, and if anyone, anyone listening to this, if it's <laughs> your content... <laughs> I'm not to see in my presentation, not even mine, I mean, but I, I just say thank you to those. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not charging anything, I'm not making any money out of this, I'm just sharing so that what they have done is also shared with other, but actually, other people, you know, yeah. so it's just a good slide, there's no yeah. point me making another one. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I, I always say this, if the content can replace you, then you're a, not a very good teacher, are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so... Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you're so you're so you're so good to make so, sure that the content replaces you. <laughs> well, there is uh, yeah, no, no. No, actually, some, I think that's where Creative uh, Commons comes in. <laughs> now, Finland, Finland has a good model. No, you cannot. Uh, some sort. You cannot look at you cannot look at pockets of success. You must look at the whole system. Finland has a very different system altogether. So you cannot just look at the success. You must also, it's just like an iceberg, you know. You cannot look at only the top. You must see what's available at the bottom. So those are the things that make the top work, you know. So you have to look at the culture. You have to look at the infrastructure. You have to look at the, the teachers. You have to look at the content. Then, you want to add, you must look at the thing. You not look at this piece of a, a This is why it doesn't work. This is why it doesn't work. We cannot adopt wholesale things that become has been acculturated by other people and we have a totally different culture you know and intellectual property right is a uh, um, but then that's where creative commons came about just to just to cover uh, academics who are willing to share and not be too bogged down with intellectual property that they can use and other people can also use the content so I, I think it's a give and take but first we must give we always take or we only take this is a problem and 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 they say there's only one item in the whole planet which is above the law, and that's technology. Because the law is, is always catching up. Do something first. If it's not right, then you take it back. Otherwise, go ahead. You know, there's there's no law yet to to prosecute you. <laughs> as far as technology is concerned, you know. So don't be afraid. Just just do it. And then when the uh, the law says you can't do it, you say, oh sorry, I'll take it back. <laughs> kind of thing. You know? <laughs> True, because I mean, okay, whatever you go. share, <sighs> as, uh, yeah, whatever you share, as long as you don't, what, nobody's gonna create much trouble except tell you maybe to take it down. That's it. You don't worry about sharing as long as you don't oh, yeah, sell yeah, it. Yeah, you, you sell no, it, you, you have to make sure whatever you have is copyrighted. Yeah, don't don't call it your own. You 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 and you acknowledge, you reference yeah. it. You say, this is I uh, thank you. I thank. 
whoever slide it belongs to. I thank Mark Bullen, who's the first slide I took. But, and that's it. And we're just sharing it. I mean, uh, he, people know that he's his property. It's not mine. I'm not saying it's mine either. Okay. So I'm just sharing it. The whole idea is I'm here using all the slides so that I don't have to redo all the slides. And then just I'm using content. And people, you're free to use whatever you hear and see on this presentation. Go ahead. I have no problem with that. You know. Yeah, proper citation. That's fine. The people and they are happy that you they use your work. This is the whole point of putting it up. Yeah. Nobody use my work. They were going to be so sad. You know, I'd be very happy if you use my work. I have no problem with it. You know, I'm not going to become any richer. <laughs> yeah, learning is okay. sharing, and sharing is learning. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I mean, uh, I. I don't think you lose anything, you know. You really don't. I mean, it's something. It's not like money. When you lose money, you, you share more, you get more. And it's, uh, it's how it works. I don't know. That's how I think, anyway. Anyone okay. Wants anybody else? Any some dying question? Wants me? the mic? I can give you the mic. <laughs> wow. One OER yeah. Malaysia. That's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Dinosaur. Yeah, should let me conduct a workshop like there first. <laughs> Yeah, by the way, I'm going to USM to right. conduct Maybe, the workshop yeah, on OER on the Twitter. Some <laughs> content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, you, you told me. To. Yeah. yeah, we'll get to some, some, yeah, some nice food. Prof Karim is too busy today. Prof Karim is not around. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm uh, surprised. Prof Karim is around. He's also just, another busy guy. Can I just <laughs> comment on Noor? <laughs> I no, just want to no, comment no, on no, Noor's no. comments regarding the teachers. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, basically, from my experience, la. Uh, what is important is to change. You need to get top management support. That's important. Okay, Nadia. Bye -bye. Don't focus on those who don't want. Yeah, don't focus on those that you, don't want to to actually change. Focus on those that want to change first. Work on them. Change them because they, after a while, yeah, will yeah, create yeah. a culture in there. And and the stubborn ones slowly, if they want to be left out, they'll be left out. But they when they see more and more people embracing it, they will slowly want to join. Also, maybe sure. the egos will stop them, but they will want to join. So start with those that want to yep. change. Don't waste so much time on those that don't want to change. Don't waste the time on them. But you mm -hmm. need to have top management support. That's the first thing now. But after that, focus on those who want to change and change them and work with them. And slowly the culture will be. Because if you focus yep. on those that don't want to change, you're never going to you're never gonna get anything to work. Because <laughs> they might never yeah, change anyway. You're get so more focus frustrated. on those that want to change. <laughs> yeah, and there's yeah, always, yeah. always people that want to change, you know. I know. Yeah, that. yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. There was a what? That was, anyway, there's no one wants to change. There's no challenge. It's gonna be so boring. <laughs> <laughs> and also some well, some expertise well, on you. Can how we just to clap cook? everyone? <laughs> well, yeah, Prof. Rosa, can we please? Around. Around. Not you. I mean everyone else. Can we just clap? Can we clap for Prof. Rosa? <laughs> Give us a great presentation. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, it was, we really enjoyed it. You can clap also. We can do like. Uh, I, I, I don't want you to jump. <laughs> We clap. No, no, no. Yesterday I was at the airport. I told my wife, I'm going to get a light. I said, my wife said, no, no, no. I know. I, I said, no, no, no. I was better not. I could bomb, you know. It cost, <laughs> anyway, I know. I it costs about 800 to 1,000 ringgit. <laughs> what? The light saber? Really? The real one. I mean, the one that's like the, 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 uh, the, the good one. The bad one. The one you... The bad one you can buy at Maidin or the real one. Sound. <laughs> <and so> on. <laughs> yeah. Hello. I I think the laughter I lost Prof Rosan. Can I see you? Hear you? <laughs> Any more questions while no. waiting for Prof? Get. I'm. I think I lost connection with Prof Rosan. Wait, he's offline. <laughs> he laughed so much he went offline. Any questions? Any questions you'd like to address Prof. Rosan by the time he, he should be back anytime soon? This session will be recorded. Uh, Nor Hayati, are you willing no. to do a presentation on the 13th December? Uh, I mean, December, 13th of June. Are you willing? What? <laughs> Public. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, no, I've invited. I was lost for. I know, we lost you at the moment of laughter. <laughs> Oh, really? Okay. This is this framework. You can actually write something about this framework. 
example, do, you can actually reconfigure your teaching content with this to, to incorporate your activities, your technology, and, and this, this, this you can you can actually test it in class to see how it works, and you can actually publish it. If you're willing to do this, and, and my whole idea at the end of the day is to kind of uh, create a, a directory, directory like 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 what I mentioned just now. So because it doesn't exist yet, even if you look at uh, Khan Academy, the huge class, but it has not been categorized. Uh, you have to go there to find out what's there. And, uh, sometimes it's um, okay. Sometimes it's um, yeah. I'm not going to say too much about other people. But, um, no, I have not published this yet. I have not published this yet. But 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 we are free to use it and acknowledge it. And uh, I'm working on it. Okay. Are you going to make the slides available please, on please, SlideShare please. or not? Are you going to upload it to SlideShare? Uh, no. You are you? I just need I, your I rather opinion. You do uh, it, then I can just take the no, link. No. 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 No, oh, no, I'm just, so I'm, uh, we're going back to the point of the pictures that I use in newspaper sometimes, just whether it's uh, okay to put it on the net or not, uh, I, what, what, what would you advise? Because if I were to give a presentation in a seminar, I would just give them the text without the pictures. You know, there are just some pictures there that I, I mean, uh, this is mine, this is a problem, uh, uh, this is mine, mine, my, my, uh, uh, more kind of uh, taken either of the net or uh, yeah this is this is taken from somewhere uh, I can't remember where this is again from the net and uh, this is again from this website uh, again from somewhere and you know that's all my this is from a PowerPoint presentation of uh, the history of education education technology I kind of uh, do a screenshot and uh, paste it. Um, I just like the cartoon as well. So, like, like I said, it, it, it contains some pictures that's from the net, blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure whether it's... Uh, what do you think? Is it necessary for them to know? Um, or is it just necessary to give them this technology, no, think, like all this... Con the, no. uh, what do you think? Uh, no, I think... Uh, I think uh, it's up to you. But I think I I would rather that you upload it to Slasher than Mira, so it's it's then I just link it. I'll just make it embedded into the 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 the, the blog post about your your webinar, if it's possible. I, I mean I can upload it. I think it's better. You have a SlideShare account or? Oh, yes. Do you have a SlideShare account? Or if you don't want to? Yes, yes, I have a SlideShare yeah. account. But if you don't want to upload, it's fine because they already. Because yeah. we will make the recording available. But sometimes maybe they wanted a few of those slides. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, just as, I have you know, print no out problem, or something. It's very difficult to print out my, 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 my point is, some of the slide doesn't belong to me, like everybody else. I'm just sharing it for other people. So yeah. I, I claim no right to those. Yeah. I'm just sharing it. Yeah, uh, sure. that, that's all. I mean, uh, we're, we're on the same same, uh, yeah. same, um, same boat here. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Can we decide on this later on? But anyway, the web... Yeah, sure, sure. But the webinar can we, can we is this? recorded. Can so we decide that, on this? Yeah. yeah. As a oh, okay, okay, that's fine. Made, I think, I think that, that's good that, enough. That was, <laughs> that's good enough. Fine, that's I fine. I think that's, that's good, good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 But I don't want to... But I hope I don't one day any, I can attend your tech... <laughs> you what? I hope I can attend your workshop one day on the technology framework or the teaching and learning framework. Oh, sure. uh, okay, that'll okay. That'll be interesting. Anyway, anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how are we doing for time? Are people still around? I'm okay. Uh, I think you. Yeah. Are you gonna? Okay. Yeah. You know the problem here, like in a in a normal classroom, people leave. Maybe not even here, or they yeah. here. I don't know. <laughs> There's still 18 people in the, <laughs> in the room. <laughs> Uh, I'm still, okay. maybe they're in the toilet okay. or they're actually mentally here, I'm not sure, they're still around, okay. It's your program today. <laughs> I have no idea what's your program today. Uh, yeah. I if, you, I if mean, you have to attend the no, meeting, I'm, I think... No, no, no. This morning is for you. This morning is for you. This afternoon, I'm somewhere else. Oh, okay. This no, morning is for you. what I do no, is I have, I have no to every, <laughs> every webinar, I have to kick out the participants. It's very sad. They don't leave on their own. I actually have to close the classroom and everybody disappears. <laughs> <laughs> that means the, the speakers are very good. La. The, okay. the speakers are very no, good. I, I'm I mean, still around. <laughs> in the, no, I, I, let's, let's be level. Then we will shut, we'll close shop. Yeah, three more minutes. Any more about, questions? About seven minutes left for anyone who wants to uh, 
Yeah, two minutes. Uh, let's, okay. let's stop it. Seven more minutes. Any questions or not? 11.30. Okay, which, what, are you using <laughs> world time, Malaysian time, can... German time? <laughs> <laughs> Normal time. <laughs> And you can even send comments. I mean, I'm, okay, I welcome okay, I have any the comments. Six uh, more minutes. Six more minutes. No, okay. <laughs> any comments? Anybody wants to make any comment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as that I said that you didn't like, like to hear or something. But I'm just promoting, like, say, my technology. You think in my framework, and I think I, at the end of the day, I'm trying to get people to do something to actually use it and check this is the whole idea. It means you must start focusing on uh, the content, the pedagogy, and the technology. You can do that with what you have, have now and actually improve on it by because once you identify the learning style, you can actually tweak it to add one more learning style or something like that. So you, you're actually enriching your content already. You know. Yeah, yeah, pedagogy. Terms, actually, terms. you know, you, uh, I tell you what. What we have, we have. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I have, we have pedagogy. And uh, the goji, we have no goji. Uh, oh, to goji, we have go neki. We have uh, U B N. <laughs> then we have your pedagogy, pedagogy, hot goji, and no guide Ubuntu goji, and last year no goji. Okay, so I've done a research on this actually. <laughs> I'm not actually published it, but actually everywhere to look for. They have definitions for all this, you know. They have definitions for all this. Even Ubuntu body. Ubuntu, Ubuntu, Ubuntu means universal. It's the art of teaching in a universal context. Ubuntu is a is a is a African word. So thanks on this. Actually, I'm trying to put out the history of technology in my website. I'm still bogged down with the other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's no need to go into this. It's basically teaching people, and eh, whether it's adult or kids or whatever. I mean, just, just, just do a good job. You don't worry about all this te terminology, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, actually, I found a presentation okay. here, here on technology. Actually, I'm saying uh, that I am behind, not behind technology, but it's funny. He's referencing me, but actually, he's referring to you. <laughs> Ah, uh, this is funny. Connecting the dots. Yeah, I know this guy. He's a I know. Vance, 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 Steven, is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not finding technology. Ah, uh, 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 yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's saying Z also. Yeah, yeah, I know him. I know him. Come on. I, know <laughs> I never define technology. You. Funny, <laughs> uh, that one. Uh, but it's interesting that there's few people have tried to use yeah. technology. Though. They even have a website. But anyway, no, no, okay, uh, okay, okay, okay. The okay. Internet give me, give, <laughs> that, that, that. give me a few more minutes. No, actually, yeah, sure. if you were to look at this, I'm, I'm going back to my technology, um, okay. Eh? I want you to imagine something. Frame I want up. you to imagine. No, no, no. This. If you were to look at this, okay. You were to look at this. What you're actually doing, if you were to put this, uh. This this can be closed in a cube form based on all the technology you care to put. It can be as big or as small as you want. But this cube, what you're actually doing, if you're going different content using a different pedagogy, you're relating this cube. Okay? Mm. If you can... Uh, so asking, when you yeah. close this box, it becomes a repository. So it's a repository of learning objects. So if you can uh, investigate... All the different pedagogy uh, that you can, yeah. All the different pedagogy, the, all the different content, all the different, and you can actually do this. You know, you can actually keep content constant. Yeah, if you keep con uh, going to investigate how the different pedagogy that you can teach the technology that you can teach the content, or you can keep technology constant, this plane. So you identify one technology, so you can actually investigate how you can teach the different content using this technology and how you can teach the, with different pedagogy using this technology or you can put technology the pedagogy constant okay this this plane so now you can investigate how you can teach this many different content using the same pedagogy and the different technology they can teach using this, this pedagogy so this is very very researchable framework 
This is crazy. To me, this, I, my mind is going crazy. I don't have the time to do all this. I've been trying to get <laughs> students, PhD, or masters, and nobody seems to be. It just scared them off, actually. But this is uh, this is fantastic. It, it can conform to all the jargon of learning object, the reusable learning object, repository, anything. You name it, you can do it. Yeah, and you can actually have another. You can look at another, another, another cube on this side. A male student, male brain, female brain, left brain, right brain. Oh my God! This is so many things that you can do with this. You know. Well, this is from my standpoint. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not sure anybody else share the same. I'm just, I'm just but this, this whole technology concept. I mean, this is so versatile. You know, okay. you can, you can, tweeted. you can, you can investigate yeah. male, female, la di da di da. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 this is definitely yes. a great PhD work. Definitely, it actually, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. But this is this is new. Like I said in my yeah. my 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 intro introduction, some of you may have heard of it, some of you may not, some of you may have, but choose to ignore it. I've been talking about five years actually, uh, Bahram, and yeah. But, so I you know I'm I'm still doing it. <laughs> Yeah, I, you can, I, I have like, a few one competition that's a bit on the... off to work on it. Whoa. I don't know. I'm, I'm just... I, I think about it. I, yeah, yeah. I really need to write it, actually. I've been saying it every year. <laughs> you, you hear me saying it every year, but I'm still doing it. <laughs> no, this framework is the one that I kind of uh, developed the, last, the latest framework. I, I think this, this warrants some time, you know, this, this, this one, actually. Um, yeah, because it's it's a uh, to me. Uh, someone has commented this is great framework. You're actually putting the events together. You actually, and you can uh, once you do this, you're gonna get a great great lesson design like a, a blueprint. You know, and it, it's a uh, it's a uh, you can update it with new content, new strategies, new activities, anything you like. You can change to new trouble areas. Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I just is there any think way, um, is not, not, not enough. Can I ask this. a question? No, I sure. just you know the you know Gangnet's nine events of instruction. Uh, I personally, uh. I I would like to reinvent that one because to me I I find the wording they use is not so easy to understand for lectures when they see I, the the words like performance okay. and it seems it I don't know it it doesn't seem to Jay, gel very okay. much. No, I mean not no. your framework the nine uh, Gangnet's nine events of instruction. Actually, I've done a small research. I have put I, I together like to uh, Genie. Yeah. Uh. No, I'm, what I'm saying is I have put together uh, three other frameworks. I have put together uh, Dick and Carry, uh, LSE okay. and Trollip, and a few more. And it can fit okay. in different, different. Uh, you can you can kind of categorize this and this into something else. And yeah. this, this, this into something else. This and this, this. So actually, yeah. all the framework that you see now yeah. kind of conform to this. This is the basic building block. Yeah, that's good. I, I, yeah. I can, I can, I have, I have done it, but I've not published it. <laughs> There's so many things that I've not published yet that I've actually done. You know, <laughs> honestly, I've, I've, I've looked at many, the many frameworks, and they all work. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I, leak, I have to leak my own stems. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like, this is not like the professors of before. Now professor have to do everything on your own. You have to walk to the post office yourself. Yeah, yeah. This is like a basic building block, and you can you can adopt and adapt so many other models that will eventually come back to this. I will come back to this. Uh, I have it. I can share with you once I find it. I somewhere in my whatever yeah. text. There. When you come, maybe I can share with you. Okay, I uh, we have exceeded our time already. If there's something else, yeah, maybe I. Okay, w one more question. W w <laughs> sure, one sure, more question. No do do you have uh, developed uh, yeah. uh, uh, one? Do you have a sample of the, the framework actually been filled in? Maybe one topic or one module or one course that actually they have adopted. Just I try, just showed you, you my. I just no. I just showed you. Like. No, no, no. I just showed you my. Yeah, I just. Uh, this one, this showed you this one is okay. my Not, physics thingy. So if yeah. I were to use, no, if I were, no, no, if I were to use the framework. What I will do is the learner, yeah. uh, distant learning student. Content is physics. This is uh, yeah. so the activity okay. is a. This is a SMS that I have sent them. So these are the messages block oh, okay. that I have actually designed for them, okay. which is in a weekly block. Okay. So this is actually using the framework okay. for the distant learning student. 
And it's oh, kind of okay. because because they are not face to face, so it's very straightforward. So you don't have any other okay. activity because they are on their own. So the activity is basically this this messages that I send to them, uh, because they learn on their own. So oh, it okay. makes my life easier. Uh, if they were face to face student, then your type of activities will be more. Yeah, because in the distance oh, learning, okay. the modules have already adopted the module have already adopted all this concept because. In the module, we already, we already direct attention, we already have the content, we already have some self-assessment question, in-text question, we provide some feedback. So the module is already following this. So this is already on the, the, the messages here, are just some of the content that um, been put in according to the framework, yes. No, actually, my comment, go back to the framework. The whole, what, this whole whatever is from you, I like, okay? I like, no, I just want to say, the thing that I okay. struggle with, <laughs> I mean, it's not. It's Gangland's nine events of instruction. Uh, the term, the the wordings uh -huh. they use, like uh, inform, learn objectives. Uh, uh, what it? Elicit the performance. I mean, for you, it's very easy yeah, to understand. Yeah, yeah. But when, you, but when you talk to a lecturer, uh, maybe you can re. I'm just saying, maybe that's why I say it would be nice actually to do a, a, a look at Gangland's nine of action and maybe reword it so it's contextualized to understanding of English as a second language or Malaysians or I don't know but because I've tried it many times with lectures they understand it but many of the terminologies you need to sit down and explain with them they need more a lot of clarification uh, yes, so that's why I say maybe the wording uh, on the events instruction can be reworded to a way it's contextualized to uh, se English as a second language or something because this is like Mm -hmm. Illicit performance mm -hmm. is very much work-based learning. It, it's not really uh, is, academic. Much academic di learning is, this is directly there. from. Uh, that one is okay. Motivate learning is okay. Easy, understandable. Inform, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, learning objectives. Sure. No, no, no. It, it can be. It can be. It, it can be customized. Oh, definitely. This is directly yeah. taking from his events of history. I know. That's I'm what I'm saying. saying that's what, so I, we can yeah, actually. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, that's why I say your framework is. You can decide for it. You can decide for it. It's something. Like events uh, of instruction, uh, is yeah, that yeah. The, should should we use reuse that or should we come maybe come up yes. with our own uh, term to fit in the, the technology? No, these are the nine. I'm just giving some nine nine events. No, yeah. no, these are the nine events of instruction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These are the nine Genius yeah. nine for example, events of instruction. I give I an example. I put the nine there. Uh, what? <laughs> Why are we calling it events of instruction? Why not events of learning or events of something else? I mean, instruction is very much, uh, uh, to me, I my perception of the word instruction is very much uh, uh, the, the military form <laughs> instruction. <Well. laughs> I know that's personal opinion, but I'm just the, saying that I'm not criticizing, no, I'm criticizing Gangle's uh, terminology. Uh, I, I'm not a big fan. I'm personally not a big fan of the word instruction. I understand, so I understand. I'm just saying that, yeah, so I'm just saying that uh, it actually okay. would be a good paper to actually uh, look at using events of instruction and then you come up with your own using events of instruction but just rewording it to a contextualizing to simplifying it like instead okay. of to okay. me events of instruction is still a bit too uh, complex for basic uh, teachers that, don't, that have no background in, in yeah, instruction yeah, design yeah. because okay. uh, I, I, I've done I, it many years I when I've seen with the time instructions <laughs> uh, yeah so be that'll be good okay. then, it, then it become uh, your your, your because now the rest of the framework is yours, but this part, yeah, uh, that's just my suggestion. Uh. Yeah, yeah, but I yeah, work yeah, with yeah. events yeah, of nine, yeah, okay. uh, nine events of instructions a lot. Um, yes, yes. Not frustrations, but uh, a lot of misunderstandings by teachers when they they see it and and, and try to understand it. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. good time. Okay. Now, thank you very much again.